Oh, uh, hello? Is this thing on? Oh. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. It's a Monday, I tell you what. And what we do every Monday, we go inside the Weld app and we answer some of these questions. This week's question comes from for Azul or Devin, I believe is his name. Any recommendations on hand grinding? Monster coupon at 37 degrees. Haven't gotten the skill on hand beveling pipe yet? Any help? We're going to dive into that. We're going to get a lot of information on just simple bevels. So let's talk about it. Now, Devin, I do want to clarify at least what you're considering heavy wall pipe, okay? Because some people, I've even some people call this heavy wall. And this is just tubing. Now, it is some heavier wall tubing when it comes to tubing, but tubing and pipe are two completely different things. Tubing can come in all different shapes and sizes. It's also measured by the wall thickness in decimals, and it's measured always outside diameter to outside diameter, no matter what shape and size. It's a little bit different when it comes to pipe. Now, as far as standard wall pipe, this is that regular degla, the schedule 40. Now I can go down to schedule 10, even schedule five, and that's where you kind of have similar wall thicknesses to tubing, but this is your schedule 40. It's about a quarter of an inch, but not quite if you were to put a micrometer on it or whatever, but this is some three inch schedule 40. Now it's measured inside to inside. That's different than the tubing. So it is actually three inches to inside to inside, about three and a half to the outside, but this is your standard wall. Now when that schedule number goes up, what happens to that wall thickness? Yeah, it goes up, it gets thicker, right? So it, the outside actually stays the same, but it, the wall thickness is going to get a little bit thicker on the inside. So standard three inch, schedule 40, is gonna be three inches on the inside. We go up to something like uh, three inch schedule 120, the outside's gonna stay the same in about three and a half, but the inside wall is gonna get thicker. I know that's confusing, but that's just how she goes. And that's for pipe sizes, everything 12 inches and below. And then this is what I would kind of consider heavy wall, right? This is some like inch and three quarters or so pipe. Uh, and then it's about a schedule 120. I don't know, don't quote me on that, but that is uh, thick stuff. I consider something to be heavy wall when it's about schedule 80 or above. Uh, and that's just kind of like a general term of that's heavy wall. Yep, that's heavy wall. You know, people call heavy wall all kinds of certain things. And pipe also is measured differently whenever you get the bigger pipe. If you get to 14 inches and up, it's measured outside to outside like tubing, but not like pipe 12 inches and below. And what about 13 inch pipe? Do they even make that or is that just unlucky? I don't know. That's the difference between tubing and piping. So let's talk about beveling heavy wall pipe. Now Devin's saying he's wants to know how to hand bevel this pipe a little bit better. He wants to bevel heavy wall pipe, but uh, I'll tell you what, Devin, I'm gonna avoid grinding a bevel on this by hand, but like the plague. I don't wanna have to hand grind this at all. I'm gonna use some form of cutting process of bevel or torch, whatever I can, if I can. Like this one is already, but use some sort of form of automation. Maybe it's a factory end, uh, but that's what we're gonna go off of as far as measuring how much bevel we need to compensate for when beveling a piece of pipe. Now, I would like to use some form of even a roller if you don't have a cutting process, some sort of automatic rotator or even a hand wheel like I've got here. Now, that thing spins really, really, really fast. And it actually puts a bevel on really easily. But you're saying you don't have any of these things, so we need to at least go back to something. You got to have something to hold this, and a vise is going to be the bare minimum that you're going to need in order to put a hand bevel on this thing. Now, this is what I would consider what comes straight off the factory. The ends of the pipe, after they're being made and they're cut and they're beveled, typically they have a really nice face to them and there's usually somewhat of a land. Now, if you were stick welding or maybe this is a practical application for you, you might be able to just wire weld the sucker, butt some pipes together and you're good to go with just a factory end. But something you should always check before welding any factory end is making sure that that cut is square, right? You gotta make sure that cut is square in order to have a good straight gap clean gap with your fit to make your pipes level plumb whatever they may be the other thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to play pretend like this doesn't have a bevel on it yet and we need to measure the amount back it is from the bevel edge to that square since we know that this bevel is square that bevel takes up a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch quarter of an inch so from the root face to the edge of the bevel face back here is a quarter inch length. So if I measure a quarter inch back after we cut this thing square, that's how I know where the back side of that bevel is going to be located. So that's what we're going to do. Cut it, put the mark on it, mark, mark and back that quarter inch, and then we're going to bevel it. We know where the back side of the bevel is going to be, so now it's all about grinding it.
Yeah, I reckon that's some heavy wall, all right. It's gonna take a second for this bandsaw to get through this stuff. But it doesn't matter what you cut this with, whether it be a grinder, a porta band, a bandsaw, a bigger one, whatever, the cut's gotta be square. We're choosing this to all, you know, in lieu of a grinder because I have it here and it's much quieter and it's not gonna make as much of a mess and it's gonna be maybe probably a little slower, but it's gonna cut really nice and really square. So that's why we're choosing to do this. It doesn't matter what you cut it with, it just has to be square before you can even think about putting a bevel on it. So we're gonna play pretend that this bevel was on here, it wasn't square, and we're gonna have to take a quarter inch off of it anyway. And now we're gonna square cut it and then put a bevel on it. And that's why we love the bandsaw. Nice, clean, straight cuts all the way through. We know that it's gonna be square when we go to put a bevel on this. We also got our quarter inch marked all the way around on this, you know, from the bevel side. That's gonna be the back side of our bevel. So that's what we're gonna use as a guideline in order never to cross that with our grinders to have that good uniform shape. You also gotta consider that there's a land on there. So what you gotta do is you could take a Sharpie or some other color, it doesn't really matter. This helps see what you're doing if you wanna Go ahead and lay it out. They have some layout paint that a lot of people use for this stuff. Uh, and just color the be this bevel up. That way when you start to grind, you can see how much of that root face you got left. Right now our root face is square and it's the thickness of the wall uh, of the pipe, you know, the wall thickness. So we wanna make sure that we leave an eighth of an inch all the way around on this blue stuff in order to do that. This is completely optional, but it does help you see a little bit better. And I'm just using a blue Sharpie for this. All right, so we've taken it out of the wheel, the easy wheel as I like to call it. We put it in a vise, armor clamps are on it, got the vise clamped down with the clamps to clamp it down to the table so the clamps don't make the, the clamp, the big clamp, move the clamp. You gotta have this thing secured, okay? End of the day, this is the safest way to do it. You, you can't just be trying to hold this with your hand and put a bevel on this thing. The bevel's not gonna turn out the way you want and it's not safe. You're gonna, you know, risk your fingertips, get cut off. So. We got us a quarter inch disc on here, not a quarter inch, yeah, quarter inch. And we're just gonna give her a heck right in this area, working it back and forth until we get close to that line. I'm gonna get about halfway to that line and then I'm gonna get all the way around, rotate this thing, rotate this thing, rotate this thing until I get about halfway through and then I'm gonna continue. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Take off a little bit of time and put it back on, but you can always take off more. Nice, no, no power. Action? All right, so we've been grinding for about five, six minutes now completely. So we've got the bevel on there. I'd say you could probably slap it on there and go ahead and weld it. But we're gonna go ahead and take some pride in our work and put some aesthetics on it. Also, I really like the angle of approach of staying on this one side of the pipe. I was able to see my back line really well. I could still see the front edge. I probably went a little bit excessive with you know, getting to that land and not getting it at exactly an eighth. I've kind of thinned that up. You can't just get all the way down to a knife edge and put another land on it because now you're removing metal again and then this piece might be just short enough to be out of tolerance. So you've got to compensate for that land or don't grind it off in the first place. Go ahead and switch on over to a flap disc and we're just gonna use the vise. It's not clamped and we got to be careful but this will give me at least something to roll this pipe. You know, that just puts the icing on the cake, it really does. Now, if this was something to be, you know, worried about the inside of the pipe or the outside, we'd want to make sure we clean up the inside and outside as well as prepping it. But that bevel is on there. We probably got a little bit, a little bit more or less of a land on this one than we do the original. But hey man, that's how you grind a bevel. That's how you lay it out. That's how you get it ready to weld again. After weld, after weld, we can get a lot of use out of this 
these two coupons right here, we ought to be able to get four or five welds out of these before they're just something we just can't work with anymore. So if you got any more questions, guys, be sure to go check it out in the weld app. Find me, Austin Hargit. You can ask them in my DMs or you can go ahead and post them on the main feed because I'll be watching, guys. Stay tuned for next Monday when we answer next week's question.